McLean checked the newspaper and spoke to Ref, who was speechless. The front page announced the engagement of Duke Ian Cherville and Grace Bennett. McLean knew of their love but chose to stay by Grace's side, though it pained him to witness their happiness seeing Grace in the garden with Ian. McLean sighed he could only be her friend, aware of the invisible line he couldn't cross, much like with Celonia remembering Celonia's recent dejected laughter. McLean felt conflicted despite understanding her feelings, his own heart had moved towards Grace, leaving Celonia behind I thought you'd stay with Selly, McLean muttered to Ref both had betrayed Celonia, and now Ref was silent, grappling with his own guilt McLean's temper flared as he grabbed Ref's collar, accusing him of betraying Celonia Ref, unfazed replied that his actions had saved Sally McLean, choked with emotion, let go, remembering Grace's plea for peace McLean. Grace called, breaking the tension. Her smile dissolved McLean's confusion, and he walked towards her, his demeanor softening ref, observing McLean's fleeting confusion, was suspicious but followed Grace's call, leaving his doubts behind. Salonia sat with Ella at a cafe, comforting her with assurances they could eat anything they wanted. Ella raged at the newspaper's romantic portrayal of Ian and Grace's engagement, recalling how Ian had cheated on Salonia. The public largely sided with Salonia, criticizing Ian. Salonia, detached from the article's sentiment, reflected on how her relationship with Ian and the others had dissolved she had struggled for days but now felt more at peace Ella, noticing Salonia's calm, asked about her plans Salonia planned to use her remaining three-month leave fully, enjoying the downtime despite Ella's suggestions for activities, Salonia was uninterested in travel or adventure, tired from her recent battles against demons Ella, exasperated, finally suggested staying home which Celonia agreed was best with the celebration set in three weeks, she decided to rest at home, enjoying the comforts of the duchy, even though it wasn't the budget her father set for her every month, Celonia had received a reward from the emperor three months ago the emperor awarded the saviors who were pivotal in subjugating the demon king, and her father accepted it on her behalf when she collapsed she was bestowed with the title of baronet and a small fief named Lace in the province say I heard that McLean and Ref were also given the title of Count Salonia also received a small reward, an amount that most nobles could spend for several years this money was enough to allow her to rest and play during her leave of absence after working so hard there isn't any seat, a voice at the entrance caught her attention three women who had just entered the cafe were troubled by the clerk's guidance the cafe was full of customers, and she occupied the largest table Salonia called a passing clerk and asked if the three women would like to join her the clerk quickly conveyed the offer to the women, who then approached Salonia's table with some hesitation they greeted her with exaggerated praises, seeming quite uncomfortable realizing that the original Salonia must have made them nervous, she reassured them interference, what, if the young ladies are with me, I'm rather grateful as you know, I have been away from society for a long time and have no friends to interact with. The young ladies, Abel, Rona, and Pelin, relaxed and joined her at the table Salonia smiled and continued the conversation, intending to change the negative image the original Salonia had built during their chat. Abel asked if she was okay, likely wanting to ask from the beginning but holding back out of politeness of course I'm fine, Salonia replied smiling then. The conversation shifted to gossip about a scandal involving a baron's family Ella, who had joined the table, expressed her indignation Salonia didn't stop them, feeling pleased to have someone on her side she guided the conversation with a noble tone, condemning the man who cheated on her and the woman he met the cafe door opened, and the atmosphere turned tense a man, tall enough to nearly touch the ceiling and cloaked in animal fur, entered the young ladies shrank back calling him the beast of the night Salonia couldn't take her eyes off his familiar profile the man, with black hair and red eyes, approached the counter and received a large sack from the trembling clerk Rona explained that the man always got food from there to give to the starving. As the man left, Salonia noticed the scar on his chest, hinting at a colorful past the young ladies resumed their conversation about him, revealing he wiped out beasts and criminals Salonia found him an interesting subject and wondered about the repercussions of his actions.
Simonia was on her way back to her house after leaving the cafe Tilda copyright time had slipped by, and the sun was already setting as she chatted with her new friends Ella, her maid, looked pleased with the new acquaintances Celonia also found them agreeable despite their incessant chatter, which sometimes hurt her ears. When are you going to invite them? Ella asked sooner or later, Celonia replied she had already made another appointment with them planning to host a tea party at her house. It was her first time enjoying such ordinary days since she possessed this body, and she relished the casual conversations and outings as they rode in the carriage. Salonia reminisced about the day they defeated the Demon King the memory of the monstrous figure, covered in black scales with red, burning eyes, lingered in her mind it was a terrifying sight, one that she alone had seen up close suddenly. The carriage came to an abrupt stop with the loud neigh of the horses Salonia and Ella held onto the handles to avoid being thrown out the coachman's trembling voice reached them we are surrounded by beasts. Princess Salonia quickly assessed the situation they were on a side road through the woods, where wild animals often appeared they were surrounded by at least 15 beasts, a mix of wolves and wild dogs panic set in, but she knew they had to act can we break through? She asked. The horses are too frightened to move, the coachman replied. Then I'll deal with the beasts in front when I give the signal, run. Salonia decided she opened the carriage door despite Ella's protests outside. The beasts growled, showing their sharp teeth her heart pounded, but she moved forward, extending her hand a healing light shot from her hand striking down several of the wild dogs now. She shouted the coachman spurred the horses, but as Salonia turned to get back into the carriage, a wolf and several dogs lunged at her a deafening roar filled the air, and a black light struck the ground Salonia was thrown several meters away, landing painfully on the dirt ground groaning. She tried to get up but couldn't dust fill the air, and the sounds of animals ceased abruptly a huge silhouette approached through the haze as it came closer. Salonia saw bright red eyes the beast of the night the man lowered himself to her level his face was too familiar she had seen him at the cafe Tilda copyright, but more importantly, she recognized him from her past you're supposed to be dead, she gasped you know me, he growled. His red eyes flashing Celonia's mind reeled this was the demon king she had defeated. How could he be alive? Panic and confusion overwhelmed her as she lost consciousness. Celonia turned around while Leon and MacLean were flying to the western district to announce the victory I will go with you, dissuading Ref from following her. She entered the spire again inside the silent demon king castle it was hard to believe that a fierce battle had been going on just a few minutes ago the battle is over although they struggled quite a bit against the demon king. They won in the end she could go home now half a year of hard work had finally come to an end Salonia carried her weary body forward. Her legs limping her body was a wreck even if she was a walking corpse. She was safe in, ref, and MacLean's conditions were all the same but their wounds were all healed and their physical strength was restored due to Salonia's healing technique although she was unable to take care of herself. Having exhausted all her energy in treating them here it is we entering the castle alone, she found her own dagger lying on the cold stone floor, the blade was stained with blood thick and red like the red ruby on its hilt it was the sword that cut through the demon king's chest it was when she picked up the sword she almost left behind and was about to turn around suddenly, a vibration was felt on the floor, and the huge corpse of the fallen demon king began to tremble Salonia, startled by the unexpected situation, fixed her sword she was afraid that it might be revived. But the black scales that covered the demon king's entire body turned into ashes and scattered in there, air the horns on its head and the black light covering its face all turned to ashes and scattered a man with black hair was lying in the place where the entire body of the giant body had turned to ashes she approached cautiously, holding her surprised heart at that moment, the man's eyes opened wide gasp. With a shriek of her own, Salonia fell behind the bright red eyes they met were burning like a living flame. Without any time to appreciate it, she stabbed him in the chest with the dagger she was holding with all her might a creeping, sensation spread through her fingertips. It was a confirmation kill this time, as if he had truly died, his body, pierced by the sword, didn't even move just like a person whose eyelids were facing the end. 
They just closed a dead body closed eyes Salonia sighed at the confirmation of his death and cupped her trembling fingertips. She then walked out of the castle without looking back Salonia's eyes flashed open her chest was rising and falling greatly from her rough breathing her heart beat fast like a locomotive she gulped and blinked her eyes her blurry vision began clearer then she saw the familiar ceiling it was her own room a hot breath burst out with a deep relief it was a dream. How fortunate she had a really crazy dream so much that she didn't even want to think about it she could feel the sheets she was lying on were wet with sweat, perhaps because she was suffering, from a terrible nightmare even the cold sweat that formed on her forehead Salonia sighed and wiped the sweat with the towel on the table next to the bed however, where does the dream come from? Miss you're awake what a relief just in time, Ella, who opened the door and came in, found her awake and ran towards the bed Ella how are you feeling? Are you okay? What about your waist? Does it hurt? Waist? Under the barrage of questions from Ella, Salonia slowly raised her upper body. What happened? Ah, you have to wake up carefully it hasn't been long since you've been treated Ella hastily helped and supported her shoulders treated? Don't you remember? There was an accident accident? No way I a broken bar on my way home from the cafe. You remember I'm glad at that moment. Salonia felt that something was wrong and pulled the blanket covering her body her white legs were intact however, a splint for a cast was attached to her waist it was the part where she felt the tingling pain in her dream, there was a slight crack in your ribs. The duke called a healer, who treated you cracked ribs. Ella, how long has it been since I came home? It's been about two hours miss, can you move? The guest has been waiting with the duke since a while ago guest, her distraught. Swaying eyes looked up at Ella what is this uneasy feeling? Yes a lifesaver who saved us and the Miss Ella replied with a wide smile on the contrary. Salonia's face hardened as if it had become rigid her fingertips, exposed between the sleeves, trembled down no way. Apostrophe Salonia, who sprang up, bounced out of the room Miss she didn't stop at Ella's urgent voice behind her her destination was only one the splints that were in her way had been taken off and thrown away long ago the white skirt she was wearing fluttered and her tousled hair fluttered behind she ran down the stairs so fast that her bare feet weren't even visible and opened the door to the drawing room father oh Salonia is your body Galloway who was sitting on a sofa, raised his body and opened his eyes wide in surprise at the sight of his daughter in front of him even if she was in a hurry, it wasn't polite to wear pajamas in the presence of a guest ha ha you girl did you come out immediately after waking up, my daughter must have been so grateful I hope you understand Galloway gave a good natured grin, defending the behavior of his daughter, who had been rude I Salonia, come and say hello Galloway gestured towards Celonia who stuttered and was unable to speak properly inside the spacious living room on a long, blue velvet sofa next to the duke seated in the high chair, sat a man of enormous stature leaning on the sofa like in his own bedroom, with his long legs crossed the man's black hair glistened like black crystals, and his bloodshot eyes burned like flames the same as he was in her dream we meet again staring at the stiff Celonia, he grinned, when Galloway left saying that he would come after work for a while, only the two of them, Celonia and the man, were left in the drawing room the man was sitting on the couch, wearing a black cloak, just as she had seen him before, staring at her but Celonia's spirit, who had left her house, hasn't yet returned she thought it was all a dream, yet it was reality she realized it the moment she looked closely at the face of this man whom people call the beast of the night that he was the demon king she cut it was this face that she saw after he died the only person who saw it was her anno, why on earth, apostrophe, he is dead as if proving that he was dead, the rift disappeared and the rampaging monsters also calmed down when the demon king was resurrected after 100 years, the quiet demons awakened and started rampaging the fissure in the monster forest that appeared with the appearance of the demon king was connected to the private house in the northernmost part, and the monsters made the private house a mess and descended down and down troops were sent to clear it up while the saviors tried to defeat the demon king inside, the soldiers fought a fierce battle with the demons outside six months after a long battle, 
the Demon King died and the rift disappeared the monsters who lost their ruler lost their power again and entered a dormant phase, and didn't come out of the monster forest to this day. That condition persisted Eli this is Eli Salonia clutched her head with a stunned expression she just wanted to turn away from the unbelievable reality the one called the beast of the night is the demon king does this make sense? How long are you going to stay like that? While she was drowning in her own thoughts, a voice, sounded as if it was very bored, pierced her ears. Salonia's head slowly turned to the front as soon as she raised her gaze, she met the red eyes, of a man sitting with his legs crossed. Staring at her arrogantly Salonia's shoulders twitched his bloody eyes brought back memories she had tried to forget why are you here? Because I saved you then if you go back now I'm not sure before that, I need you to pay off your debt to me I will give you enough tell me how much you want you, you know me Salonia's mouth clamped shut at the sudden accusation his clear red eyes bore into her as if trying to see through her have you seen me? That can't be I saw you for the first time today, then why were you surprised to see me? As if you've seen me you asked how I'm alive his yaksh like red eyes glowed tenaciously it did I even say that? Apostrophe a trickle of cold sweat ran down her spine she tried to keep her expression unfazed I mistook you for someone else I have no memory but I think you know about me the unexpected confession left Salonia confused day is that why he's obsessed with with who I am? Or did the male leads change because the demon king who was supposed to die didn't die? Apostrophe no. No I don't know who you are you don't know me his face suddenly turned cold he opened his mouth again, eyes wide open you're not going to tell me until the end but I need to know about the me you know I really don't know, you know? Really? A disturbingly foolish smile bloomed across his face and her feelings came true Salonia opened her mouth fists clenched at the sight in front of her hey because I don't remember he lay down on the sofa, his long legs sprawled over the table what does that matter now? I have nowhere else to go, so I have to stay here his giggling made Salonia's head throb leave now unless you want to be dragged away by the guards, he raised the corners of his smooth lips and snapped his fingers whoosh a fist sized ember blazed in the air between them. Hovering precariously close to the curtains how many embers do you think I can make? Enough to cover the whole house. Hey what do you think this will do to the people who try to bring me down? That the front yard is large we can bury it there he laughed well at scary words it was a clear threat in the end. Salonia clutched her head in despair she knew how great his power was she didn't want to get involved four people had been determined to defeat the demon king, yet now she was alone so tell me about the me you know and about you too ha, I really don't know, she buried her face in her hands with a sigh she had nothing to say to him even if there was, how could she get those words out of her mouth? A you're the demon king and I'm the savior who killed you, a why isn't she talking? Apostrophe, he looked at her tenaciously, as if trying to gauge the truth, I have a lot of time he took the fire he had left in the air and stood up w what is it? Shocked by his sudden action, she leaned back his solid and gigantic body, which overwhelmed people, resembled a wild brown bear I won't bite you seeing her shrinking. He frowned he walked over to the floor to ceiling window that occupied one side of her living room you know he opened his mouth again, taking in the view of the garden your father told me to stay as long as I wanted before I go Salonia, so startled, almost chewed her tongue out father knew who this man was and brought him into the house I can't refuse a favor, it's okay to refuse, no that can't be if you don't like it. Tell me what you know then there's no reason for me to stay here I told you I don't know anything. Alright I'll be waiting how long you cannot speak Salonia stared into space with her limp, unfocused eyes it was obvious that God had a grudge against her drip, drip the sound of water droplets echoed underground inside the dark, damp cellar. The walls were all wet the cellar door opened with a sharp sound the man who opened it walked inside, dragging a black robe squelch. Squelch water splashed from the pools of water, soaking the tips of the robe the man's legs climbed two steps and stopped on the podium in front of him was an altar up to the height of a person's waist a hand slipped through the robe and touched the cold altar perhaps it was made of silver, the altar was so cold that even being close to it made one feel cold the man raised his head as if he had been waiting, 
Someone came up behind him how was it? I got two more the subordinate put down a bundle the size of a person on the floor thud a heavy noise echoed through the ground and walls the man looked at the bundle, then at the altar a large magic circle on the pitch black altar held colorful mathematical formulas dozens of small red pebbles were scattered inside the number was insufficient to fill the entire magic circle the man clicked his tongue dissatisfied there's a good way to speed up please give me your order as his subordinate knelt down a plan flowed from the man's mouth 